I love you dearly, she said to me. Please don't do it. Now, when you're holding power tools, that's an invitation. And I said, I got this. And she said, no, you don't. Which, again, when you're holding power tools, is just a challenge. You see, there was this branch of a tree that was going towards our house on the second story. I should have had scaffolding if I was going to attempt to cut the branch. I didn't even have a real chainsaw. I had one of the electric chainsaws, and the branch was way too big to be cut down with an electric chainsaw. Mind you, it's at least 20 feet off the ground, and I have an extension ladder, but one that doesn't go all the way that high. So I have my wife come hold the base of the ladder while I am standing with one foot on the ladder trying to angle one foot over to get higher and she's holding the base of this ladder and then there just start to be a couple leaves that fall as I'm sitting there attacking this branch with my chainsaw. And then I feel the ladder jolt while I'm cutting the branch and I look down and I stop cutting and no one is holding the ladder anymore. (laughs) And I said, where did you go? What are you doing? And my lovely wife, whom I love dearly, said, I was getting hit with things. (laughs) I need you to hold the ladder. And she said, I'm not leaving our kids parentless because you are trying to do something you shouldn't be doing. Like, we're yelling at each other right along the side yard. The neighbor's house is maybe 20 feet away. And, like, at that point, if the neighbors were outside, they'd have gone inside. Because they'd still be listening, but they don't want to be obvious that they're watching the drama unfold. I'm just like, come hold the ladder. And she's like, I'm not holding the ladder. You shouldn't be doing this. I said, the branch is growing into the house. It's going to be growing into the siding. It's going to have all kinds of algae and things. I need to take care of this branch. And she said, you can't take care of this branch. Oh, can I ever. And so I fired that bad boy up. And I just went to town on that branch, and I'll have you know, I cut that branch successfully off the tree. Ha! (laughs) And then the branch stopped falling, and it was pinned between the house and the tree, and the ladder was right next to it, and I couldn't move the branch. And I'm pushing on it, and it's the, if the branch had feelings or if it could talk, it would just laugh in my face because it wasn't, it wasn't going anywhere. And I'm just shoving it a little bit, and I literally can't get this, this branch to budge. And so I said, Brooke, will you climb up the other side of the ladder, and maybe we can push this branch off together? And at that point, she said, I'm done, and walked inside. So then I got out my cell phone, and I called her. And I said, all right, if you won't, if you won't help me push the branch off, would you at least bring out some rope? And she said, we don't have any rope. I said, all right, bring me out some extension cords. And so I took extension cords and I tied them in knots around the branch. And then I plugged those cords into more extension cords and I went down to the bottom of, onto onto the ground And I was going to pull the branch off. And that's when I noticed that the branch was wedged right above our air conditioning unit. It's all right. You just got to pull in the right direction. (laughs) And I heaved on those extension cords, and it would not move. And it was literally stuck between our house and the tree right over the air conditioning unit that we had just bought to years ago. I'm like, all right, I'm going to need some help. (laughs) Knowing that my wife had temporarily forgotten the part of our vows that said, for better or worse, in sickness and health, when your husband's working on large outdoor projects, I will be there by his side, knowing that she'd forgotten about that portion of her vows, I decided it was time to call in a friend. And that friend named Jesse, who does stucco for a living, 
and he's incredible at it. He does great. And I'm like, hey, man, you got any, you got any scaffolding? He's like, yeah, what's up? I'm like, I think maybe I could borrow it. So he's like, yeah, what, what do you need it for? I'm like, he's doing a little project. And have a branch stuck between the tree and the house. He's like, huh? I'm like, yeah, don't, it, don't ask. It's just kind of stuck there, and it's above the air conditioning unit. He's like, yeah, I'll come over and take a look at it. He comes over, and he looks, just shakes his head. <laughs> like, I'll be back in an hour with, with scaffolding. His wife, Angie, who's one of the nicest people you will ever meet in your entire life, won't say a bad word about anyone or anything, comes out and just starts shaking her head. <laughs> says, you got a problem? <laughs> and they went, they went and they left and then they, they come back, not just with a truck full of scaffolding, they come back with pizza for us. And I'm telling you, they brought us pizza from my wife's favorite pizza place. The, Jesse and Angie single-handedly saved my marriage that night by bringing my wife pizza. And so we sat down and we ate pizza and then Jesse and I... And, and by I, I mean I carried an end of the scaffolding. <laughs> Jesse and I put up the scaffolding, and then Jesse climbed to the top of the scaffolding, and I was halfway up the first rung of the scaffolding, when all of a sudden he's pushing the tree branch down, and he knocks it completely down all the way, saving our air conditioning unit after having already saved our marriage. And at that point in time, I was just like, man, I just wish I was better it's some like handyman things. I wish I was just better at outdoor projects. I wish I was just better at this. And, and maybe you found yourself there in life where you're like, I just wish I was better at something. Maybe you're like, I wish I could throw a football like Aaron Rodgers. And if you saw that extension this week, don't we all wish we could throw footballs <laughs> like Aaron Rodgers? And as a, as a Browns fan, I just think it would be it would be right right now at Lakeside if we just paused for a moment and, and, we just, and we just prayed. Because I had to watch Deshaun Kaiser play last year, and so I really believe we should all just right now pray for the collarbones of Aaron Rodgers in light, in light of the contract that he just signed and in light of you do not want to endure another season like you had last year. And I promise you, if Kaiser has to come in, it will be even worse. So just bow your heads with me. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Maybe you wish you could paint like Bob Ross or just be at peace like Bob Ross is. And every time you make a mistake, you just turn it into happy clouds instead. Or maybe you wish, maybe you, wish you could sing like Ariana Grande and just hear what, what that woman can do when she sings and she's just magnificent. Or maybe you wish you could decorate like Joanna Gaines and your husband knows you're trying and he's had to put up more shiplap in the last year and a half than he ever thought he would have to do. But maybe you just wish that you could decorate like Joanna Gaines or, or whatever it is. We all, we all wish that we were wired a little differently from time to time or that we had a different ability than, than what we have. But here's the incredible thing. God has wired each of us with unique talents and abilities. And we will never reach our full potential. We will never reach our full potential until we embrace the way that we are and the way that God has created us. The different People have different abilities. They have different talents. And here's the thing. All of them, all of them can be used by God. All of them can be used by God. And so this morning, I want to look at a couple things. The first is we're going to look at a portion of Scripture from Exodus, from Exodus 39. And what's going on is the Israelites are wandering around in the desert. They've escaped the tyranny of Egypt, and now Moses is leading them, but they find themselves in the desert. And God's giving them all kinds of rules and decrees to follow as they are establishing themselves as a people and as a nation. And one of the things that they, that they were establishing was a religious center called a tabernacle. Now, the tabernacle was a sacred place where God chose to meet with his people, the Israelites, during their 40 years that they were wandering around in the desert under the leadership of Moses. 
It was the place where the leaders and people came together to worship God and offer sacrifices. And this portion of scripture that we're going to look at in Exodus 39 gives us just a glimpse of what went in to the tabernacle. And this is what we discover starting in verse 32. Thus all the work of the tabernacle of the tent of meeting was finished. And the people of Israel did according to all that the Lord had commanded Moses, so they did. Then they brought the tabernacle to Moses, the tent and all its utensils, its hooks, its frames, its bars, its pillars, and its bases, the covering of tanned ram skins and goat skins, and the veil of the screen, the ark of the testimony and its poles and the mercy seat, the table with all its utensils and the bread of the presence, the lampstand of pure gold and its lamps with the lamp set and all its utensils and the oil for the light, the golden altar, the anointing oil, and the fragrant incense and the screen for the entrance of the tent the bronze altar and its grating of bronze, its poles and all its utensils, the basin and its stand, the hangings of the court, its pillars and its bases, and the screen for the gate of the court, its cords and its pegs, and all the utensils for the service of the tabernacle for the tent of meeting, the finely worked garments for ministering in the holy place, the holy garments for Aaron the priest, and the garments of his son for their service as priests, according to all that the Lord had commanded Moses, so that the people of Israel had done all the work, and Moses saw all the work, and behold, they had done it as the Lord had commanded, so had they done it, and then Moses bless them. And what I want you to take away from all those details, and maybe you tuned out and you're like, what, what in the world's going on? I don't understand all the dynamics here at play with the tabernacle. The thing I want you to take away from this this morning is this, that men and women who were builders and butchers and craftsmen and architects and artists and designers and seamstresses and bakers and jewelers and farmers all came together to do what they could do to create the most sacred and holy place for the Israelites in the desert. See, you may think to yourself, I've got some skills and I've got some talents, but I'm not really sure where that would fit in in the life of church. I'm not really sure where that would fit in the life of following Jesus. Because traditionally, the things that I'm skilled at, traditionally the things that I'm good at, don't really have a, that much of a place for me at, at a church for me to really put them to good use. And I want you to know that nothing could be further from the truth. Listen again to the list of all these people that God used to create the most sacred place that all the Israelites would have access to God in. Builders and butchers and craftsmen and architects and artists and designers and seamstresses and bakers and jewelers and farmers. It wasn't just musicians. It wasn't just priests. It wasn't just people who had their lives all the way together. It wasn't just people who, who knew more of the law than anybody else. It was every single person. There was a place for them. And at Lakeside, for every single person, there is a place for you to put in your talents and your abilities and your skills and for us collectively to put them at work for God's glory and God's fame in this context as we point people to Jesus. No matter what your talent is, no matter what your ability is, it can be used for the glory of God. And so what I'm telling you this morning is don't disqualify yourself because it doesn't fit in the traditional viewpoint that you think it has to fit in order for you to be of service and in order for you to utilize that for God. We see something else here. We see also that environments matter to God. Here they are in the middle of the desert, and all of this attention to detail is going on. Because environments matter to God. And because we are created in God's image, what we discover when we pull back a couple layers of ourselves, our environments matter to us as well. 
Environments matter to us. Right now, our apartment is nothing but boxes and a couple, a couple beds that have been set up, but it is absolutely chaotic. There are boxes everywhere, and it's just kind of tense, and it's a little bit stressful just because environments matter to people. Environments matter to God, and as a result of that, they matter to people. And so this morning, I want to announce something in light of this. Because environments matter to God, and because environments matter to people. That the very first initiative we're going to be launching at Lakeside, the very first initiative we're going to be launching at Lakeside, we're going to be launching a number of initiatives moving forward. These are things that we're going to, these are things we're going to start or we're going to improve upon and we're going to do collectively as a church here at Lakeside. And so I'm so excited today to announce the first initiative and two weeks from today we're going to announce on the, on the 16th, we're going to announce a big part of this first initiative that I'm about to announce. But the very first initiative that I'm excited to announce here is this, that at Lakeside environments matter. At Lakeside environments matter. And so everything we do is going to be done and presented with excellence. And so our first step in this initiative that at Lakeside Environments Matter is this. We are going to clean up the outside of our building. We are going to clean it up so that when people have the very first impression, when they come onto this campus for the very first time, they're going to see that there, is, that there is love here, there's attention to detail, and there is service. Now, I don't want you to think that we're saying that the building and grounds team's done anything wrong. We're not. In fact, they are working on some huge projects right now, and we're so thankful for their service. But as you look around, because there's only so much time in the day, and because we're, we're freeing them up to focus on projects that other people don't have the knowledge and, and don't have the ability to do, we're... They're, they're spending all their time and their energy on those larger projects. Now we have some smaller projects that are less specialized and that we all can encounter and we all can go after. And so on Saturday, September 15th, two weeks from yesterday, on Saturday, September 15th, from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m., I'll be here. I don't know if I'll be alone, but I'll be here. And I'm going to be pulling weeds I'm going to be cutting bushes, and we are going to clean up the outside of our building. When you leave today, turn around and take a look just, just along the sides and see where we're at. Lakeside, we have to present ourselves better. And so I'm asking you for your help. I'm asking you to be here, ready to pull, if you're able and if you're available, be here. Be ready to pull weeds, be ready to trim bushes, be ready to clean up trash, and let's make sure that because environments matter to God, we present what we've been entrusted with and make sure that we present it in an appealing fashion to God and to everyone who comes on to this campus. Now, maybe you're like, oh, I would love to be here, but I have kids, and you just don't want kids in the way. Well, fear not. Fear not. I've talked to my lovely wife, Brooklyn, and she's volunteered to watch the kids that morning. And so we're going to have fun, exciting, and engaging programming for them that's available where you can drop them off down that hallway, and she will take care of watching the kids so that frees you up to come work. And if they're old enough, it isn't going to kill them to sweat a little bit either, all right? <laughs> Like, I, I learned early on, my dad would be like, uh, hey, come here, son, I need you to help me with something. I'd be like, okay, and then he would have all the tools, and I'd be like, oh, yeah, do I get to touch that? He's like, no, uh, go get me a screwdriver. I'm like, all right, so I'd run to the garage and get him a screwdriver. I'd be like, can I screw that? No, 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 uh, go get me the other hammer. I'm like, oh, great, I'm going to get to hammer something. I'd bring him the hammer. Uh, thanks. I'm like, do I get to hammer? No, no. Uh, I was just his gopher right? But that's, that's all I got to do. I got to haul the trash away, and I got to go get him all the tools that he forgot. I was like, Dad, why don't we just bring out the whole toolbox at one time, and then I wouldn't have to keep making these trips. And he'd just be like, it's good for you, son. It builds character. So use this as an opportunity to build character and some of your older kids. 
And if they're like, I don't want to go, just be like, it's for Jesus, all right? And so they can't <laughs> say no. Just throw out that card. But I'm asking you, if you're available and if you're able, join us here Saturday, September 15th, starting at 9 o'clock. As we say, you know what, environments matter to God and we're going to be good stewards of what God has entrusted us with. And we're going to make sure that the first impression that people have when they pull onto the campus at Lakeside is one of excellence. I hope you'll join us on Saturday, September 15th. So, not only do people have different talents and different abilities, but we also possess different gifts. We're going to look now at a a portion of scripture from Romans, and if you have your Bible apps, you can go there. If not, it'll be on the screens. For as in one body, we have many members, and the members do not all have the same function. So we, though many, are one body in Christ, and individually members one of another. Just as your body isn't made up of, of all the same part, nor is this collection, Nor is this church. As we all come together corporately as Christ followers, we're different. We have different talents. We have different gifts. And we utilize those in concert with one another in function to point more people and to fill roles that otherwise we could not fill. Having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us use them. If prophecy in proportion to our faith, if service in our serving. The one who teaches in his teaching. The one who exhorts in his exhortation. The one who contributes in generosity. The one who leads with zeal. The one who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness. Let me read this again. Having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us use them. If prophecy in proportion to our faith. If service in our serving the one who teaches in his teaching, the one who exhorts in his exhortation, the one who contributes in generosity, the one who leads with zeal, the one who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness. Be engaged and be excited. So one of the things that we're going to be introducing over the course of the coming year here at Lakeside are on-ramps and off-ramps to serving on-ramps and off-ramps to serving. This week, I had the privilege of driving a 26-foot moving truck that you should need a CDL to drive, but for some reason, you don't. And so (laughs) they let schmucks like me drive it, and I'm like, all right, let's go. Do you want the insurance coverage? Oh, you betcha, because I can't guarantee. (laughs) I can't guarantee this truck's coming back in one piece at all. (laughs) Normally, I'd say, no way, I'm onto this scheme. But in this case, I'm like, you cover this bad boy to the best of your ability, because it may be nothing but a couple burning tires by the time I'm done with it. I am used to driving a two-door Honda Civic. And so when you get behind a 26-foot box truck, (laughs) woo-hoo! Stay out of my way, baby. <laughs> I was driving from Ohio to, to this area, and there is no good way of getting around Chicago, I have discovered. There's just no good way. And to make matters worse, it seems like all of Chicago is under construction right now. <laughs> and the longest part of my drive was driving this 26-foot box truck through construction zones where all the signs are covered. There's cement barriers on both sides. It feels like you are trapped, and it feels like you're going on forever. There's no way in. There's no way out. There's nowhere to go. Feels like forever. And maybe you found yourself feeling that way here at Lakeside because you have been serving and serving and serving and serving for so long that something that you were once so passionate about has become an obligation. What once was so exciting has become a chore. And it's become a struggle. 
and you feel trapped, honestly, and you feel like you have to do it because if you don't, you're not sure if anybody else can or will, but you're just tired and you're exhausted and there seems like there's no way in and there's no way out and you're honestly running on fumes because life changes. Situations change. People change. So one of the things that we're going to introduce over the course of the next year here at Lakeside is our serving opportunities are going to become easier and also more user-friendly. The process of you getting involved, using your talents, using your gifts here at Lakeside, that entire process is going to be streamlined, it's going to become easier, and it's going to become more user-friendly. So we are going to give people clear opportunities to get started, and we're going to give people clear, no-obligation opportunities to get off when they are tired without feeling bad, without shaming, without any of that. We're going to give people those opportunities. So moving forward, every ministry will have a clear procedure of how to work someone in and out in a way that is structured and beneficial both for the ministry and for the individual who's serving. That will be coming. Now this is going to take some time. There's a lot of ministries that are at play, but I just want to let you know where we're heading over the course of the next year. Every ministry, every ministry moving forward will become easier to get involved with and more user-friendly, and we will have a clear procedure of how to work people in and out in a way that is beneficial for both the servant and the individual. Now, we understand that with this, sometimes emergencies happen. Sometimes catastrophes go on in people's lives, and sometimes the unexpected happens. And when that happens, we as people who follow Jesus need to be people of grace. And we need to understand that when catastrophes happen, sometimes people just immediately need to pull off to the side of the road. And that's okay in the course of an emergency. But we also want to provide a map for where we're going. And so what we're going to do in every area of ministry, as well collectively here at Lakeside, is we are going to present a very clear and compelling and concise vision for what the future looks like. And every ministry is going to, going to be a part of that. You know, sometimes when we drive, we go on long journeys. And it's, it's exciting and it's engaging because we have a destination in mind. We have a clear purpose. And when you have a destination and somewhere to go, and you have a clear purpose, you can be invigorated, and it's fun, and it's exciting to go on that journey. But sometimes traveling long distances, when when you're lost, there's nothing more frustrating than when you're lost and you're trying to get somewhere, and you've been in the car for a while. And then the person that you love dearly, whom oftentimes in my case is seated on my right in the car, who who loves me dearly and whom I love dearly and tries to help but says, why don't we just stop and ask for directions or why don't we just put it in the phone and get directions? That's the last thing I want to do because I got this. But when I don't have it, I'm frustrated because I don't know where I'm going. And Lakeside, we need to know where we're going. We're going to have a clear and compelling vision, both corporately and individually in our ministries. We're going to have goals to achieve. We're going to have progress that we track. We're going to celebrate our wins. We're going to grow from our losses. We're going to learn. We're going to make some mistakes. We're going to try some things that don't work. And then we're going to dust ourselves off and we're going to try something else. And sooner or later, something's going to stick. And then we're going to put all of our energy and the efforts into those things that stick. But understanding, it may stick for a while, but then it no longer does. And that's okay. But then it's time to adapt. And to grow. And our commitment to you, from the leaders here at Lakeside, is we are going to make the process more streamlined and more user-friendly of getting involved and using your talents 
and your gifts to serve God. Because we need you and what you have to offer. Some of you may be running on fumes. Because you've been going for so long, so hard, and you've done it so well. But you just can't maintain the pace anymore that you've been running at. Because if you do, you will become burnt out. And that will be destructive to you individually, and it will be destructive to us corporately as a ministry. So I just want to encourage you. Thank you for the work you've done. But know it's okay to slow down. I want to caution you, don't stop. If you're not dead, you're not done. If you're not dead, you're not done. There is something for you to do. Just because you can't run at the pace you used to doesn't mean you get to stop, but you can slow down. You can't stop. If you're not dead, you're not done. God still has a purpose for you. Some of you just need to get on the road. You've been watching for a while. And maybe, maybe you know exactly where you need to be headed. Or maybe you don't. And you're just like, I, you know, I don't know. Here's what I'm good at. But I don't know how that really fits in the life of, of the church. Well, we want to help you. And so today, we've given each of you a card. That's available in the, the bulletin that you were handed when you walked in. And here you'll find all of our ministries listed. But then at the bottom, there's a portion called Other Passions. And this is for those of you who just aren't sure of where to go. You're sure of what you're good at. You're sure about what you love, but you're just not sure where it fits. And so we'd invite you just to fill that in as well. Or if you know, hey, I, I'm gifted in this area and I'm good and I need to be involved in this area, then we're asking you to select that up top. And we're asking you to, to put on here your name. Put your name on here and just fold it up. And when we, when we pass the collection plate, just put it in. We are going to become more streamlined. We are going to become more user-friendly. But we can't read your mind. And so this is where we need your help. You tell us what you're excited about. You tell us what you're passionate about. You tell us where you'd fit. And know that our commitment to you is to make the process easier and more transparent than it's ever been before. Because when we come together and we use our talent, and our gifts collectively, we can accomplish incredible things for God's glory. But we need you. We need you. We need every single person. Because God's designed you. And you have something to offer. So, Fill out this card. If you can, join us on the 15th from 9 until 1. And let's get to work and see God do some great things. God, thank you for the way that you've designed each person here. Thank you for the gifts and the talents and the abilities that you've given us. And God, help us as we come together as individuals. Help us forge great teams to achieve much for you. God, I pray for the person who's here and who's serving and who's just burnt out. And God, I pray that you'd help them know it's okay to slow down. And I pray, God, for the person who's here and just needs to get started, that you would just stir in their heart that desire, that it would be unrelenting and that they wouldn't. They wouldn't look past it. 
God, I pray that you would take our efforts and you would magnify them and multiply them for your glory. God, do great things through us, we ask. In your son Jesus' name we pray.